The gloves are off, indeed. Not only has Attorney General Bill Barr hired a so-called pit bull to investigate the investigators, John Durham out of Connecticut, who has a history of investigating officials, he is working with the nation's top national security leaders to get to the bottom of exactly how this whole Russia investigation got started in the first place. Now, let's get to Mr. Durham first. The U.S. attorney will review, Mr. Durham will review, and I quote, all intelligence collection activities, all intelligence collection activities related to the Trump 2016 campaign, including how the FBI got away with using opposition research bought and paid for by the DNC and the Clinton campaign to secure a warrant to spy on an American citizen who worked for the Trump campaign. Yeah, about time, right? I mean, we spent two years listening to the media and listening to former intelligence officials tell us that Donald Trump was an agent of Russia. And now we know there was no collusion he was no agent of Russia. So why would the FBI's top lawyer, James Baker, not question the use of the dossier? Remember that dossier that they had, that they then turned over to the judge in order to get that FISA warrant? I mean, James Baker volunteered that he himself never authenticated it, anything, telling lawmakers behind closed doors that he didn't read the Woods file, which provides the underlying documentation, Meanwhile, as I reported the other night, it was actually highly unusual for him to be involved in a case like this, something he did tell the Congress. And let me quote here. He said, at that point in time, when I was at the FBI, most of the FISA, almost all the FISA applications did not go through me. And then he explained one of the reasons it did go through him was because this one was so sensitive. Well, if it was such a sensitive case, as he says... Now, Mr. Baker, why wouldn't you triple check your sources? Or, hey, maybe just check them, right, before filing a FISA warrant? And then, because you know what, I'm not done here, why not inform the FISA court judge that your application is based upon opposition research? I mean, why leave it in a little footnote when uh, that's kind of important? It's, like, really important. And I say this as a journalist. Do you think I just repeat hearsay and... and, and regurgitate it to you as though it's news? No, I check my sources. And when I've got something that's as big as that would have been, you triple check them because that's the honorable thing to do. Someone with integrity does that. But this FBI went and used a bunch of hearsay and presented it to a judge as though it was FBI fact. And then they had a little, little footnote to say, oh, by the way, this is bought and paid for by the opposition. Here's Baker's explanation on that one. Watch. Why was it in a footnote rather than written in big red magic marker in block letters across every page of the thing? Nobody's going to miss a page long footnote in regular type. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, excuse me. You treat hearsay and tabloid opposition research as legitimate FBI research. You never headline it as anything else. For the judge, you expect the judge to go and look at all the footnotes. Well, listen to Baker's inexplicable reason for just footnoting that source of the dossier to the judge. Here we go. You don't want to put in to a document like this gratuitous information about U.S. persons. You want to try to minimize it uh, to, to some extent. I mean, how about just not using the gratuitous material that you've never sourced in the first place? I mean, this is the FBI. This is our FBI. This should make everyone left, right, and center angry. Because if we have people in big government thinking that they can do whatever they want and they can spy on innocent Americans or people they consider a threat from an opposing campaign, then I'll tell you what, we have big, big problems. There were all kinds of easily disprovable things in that dossier. For one, the dossier claims with a, such specificity that Michael Cohen was in Prague in August 2016 holding secret meetings with the Kremlin. But Michael Cohen had never even traveled to Prague. And you know what? That was pretty easy to figure out. Hey, FBI, why don't you check his passport records, right? Mueller figured it out. 
It's actually in volume two, page 139. And there are more of those things throughout, more of those things that were in the dossier that could have been easily disproven. But the point is, if, as I suspect, the FBI was out there relying on opposition research for political purposes, then this is the biggest scandal in modern American political history. Perhaps the biggest scandal ever politically in this country. Joining me right now, former senior advisor to George W. Bush, Fox News contributor, Mr. Carl Rowe. Carl, good to see you. Good to see you. Tell me a little bit about Mr. Durham. What do you know? Well, a uh, career uh, apolitical, a career uh, U.S. Deputy U.S. Attorney, now U.S. Attorney for Connecticut, literally joined the U.S. Attorney's Office in Connecticut in the late 1970s after graduating from law school. He mm -hmm. has a reputation as a determined, focused, unflappable prosecutor mm -hmm. uh, who's willing to take on the powerful and, and, and his employers. He, he was the guy who took on the FBI a uh, senior agent who was basically defending and hiding Whitey Bulger's nefarious activities, using him as a confidential informant, but hiding some of his more extreme and violent deeds from law enforcement. He's the guy who took on the Republican governor of Connecticut, John Rowland, and prosecuted him and sent him to jail. Uh, he was the guy that uh, Attorney General Mukasey turned to to judge uh, the question of the destruction of the uh, tapes of uh, CIA inter interrogators, and the Obama administration asked him to take a look at uh, enhanced interrogation techniques and to make a determination as to whether they violated U.S. law. In each and every instance, he did what he thought was right, and I'm sure in this instance it's one of the reasons why Barr chose him. The American people need to have these answers, and this is a guy who's going to give them to them, and it's going to be straight arrow, chips fall where they may, Let's let the facts speak for themselves. I mean, you heard what I had to say. And, uh, I, and I still maintain, I'm sort of stunned by this, because it, it, the idea that you would ever rely on something that you had not sourced yourself, I mean, in journalism we don't do that, but yet our FBI might do that? I mean, that just seems totally bonkers to me, Carl. Yeah. Well, this is why his appointment is so important. Michael Horowitz, the inspector general of the Department of Justice, is conducting an investigation along similar lines. However, his authority is limited. He can only interrogate or interview or request documents from current employees of the Department of Justice. Now that we've got a U.S. attorney, he can turn to people like McCabe and Strzok and Comey and Baker and others who've left the government service, and he can compel them to give testimony and to produce documents. So uh, with the, this sort of, if you want to look at it, a one-two punch between Michael Horowitz, who's, who's got an impeccable reputation mm -hmm. for being fair and calling it like it is, and, but, but is limited in the authority that he has. And, and we now have Durham, who's going to be able to build on the work that Horowitz has been involved in for better than a year. Uh, and, and to extend it by talking to people that Horowitz doesn't have access to. So, you know, if you want to step back even further, we've now had four people, Mueller, John Huber in, in Utah, who mm -hmm. is looking at some, some elements of this, U.S. attorney, uh, uh, again, apolitical, uh, Durham and Horowitz, all four of them are straight arrows, and we know from Mueller's performance, here's a guy who... Uh, clearly demolished the argument about conspiracy and collusion, mm -hmm. and who, when it came to the issue of obstruction, uh, basically said there's not a prosecutable offense here, in my opinion, a clearly prosecutable action for the government, and left yeah, the final decision up to There's some Democrats that might dispute you on that interpretation, oh, that, well, by the way. <laughs> well, I, I, I know they would. Because they're clinging to anything. But, 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 but if that's out of disappointment with Bob Mueller, and now we've got three mm -hmm. other straight arrows, and I think at the end of this whole process, American people will have greater confidence that they know what happened and why it happened. Well, you know, think of what it's doing to our country in the meantime. And look, sir, I mean, I'm afraid we're going to learn some answers that are going to be um, very disheartening. Uh, you know, well, and need, I don't know. Need, I mean, we'll we, see what we'll, we we'll... need to know. We need to know because, like you, I have a deep suspicion of. I mean, how is it that that they hid uh, from the that the that the that the Clinton and campaign and the Democratic National Committee spent so much money with a law firm to hide the fact they were hiring Fusion GPS and Fusion GPS in turn hires a British retired British Secret Service agent who picks up the phone and calls.
his pals, former KGB and FSB agents in Moscow, and says, you got any dirt on Donald Trump? Now, if that is an open invitation to the Russian Secret Service to play around in the U.S. election by providing uh -huh. disinformation, and for how this came to be and how they came to rely upon it and why people did the things that they did, we need somebody with, impartial, uh, with an impartial and stellar reputation to go take a look at this so the American people can be confident this is not going to happen again. If I was a FISA judge, mm -hmm. I would be furious that this was not headlined to me, that this is the Clinton campaign opposition research effort funded by, we don't know, we don't even know today how much. They, they, they spent 12, I think it is, million dollars with the law firm. That was obviously for some legal services. But how much went to Fusion GPS? And then how forthcoming has Fusion GPS been about its role? Glenn Simpson has not been that forthcoming. Uh, at all about it. And, and we need to, as the American people, we need to be confident that the agencies of our government are not going to be used in this, what appears to be deeply political and personally driven uh, fashion. Hey, if I'm Vladimir Putin <laughs> and I've got my former KGV buddies out there talking to Christopher oh, yeah. Steele, this is perfect. This is like, yeah. you know, just made, made. It's, it's, it's ripe for that kind of opportunity and, and to expose ourselves so stupidly to that, perhaps for political yeah. reasons, it is a shame. And, uh, and remember, yeah. and remember, you talk about Russian interference. The the dossier is dumped into the American political campaign as it comes down the closing uh, months, and we have Fusion GPS and Christopher Steele trying desperately to sell this to any. Buddy, any reporter that they can get to bite on it. So, you know, you talk about Russian interference in the election. This was solicited and received by agents of the Clinton campaign and the Democratic National Committee. And, and I don't see Nadler and Schiff and the rest of this crowd being concerned deeply about that. They're focused on something that Robert Mueller came back and said there's no evidence of a conspiracy or collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians at all. And yet we got Schiff and everybody else spun up about what Rob, Robert Mueller has already killed yeah, and no. not spun up at all about what we know to be fa a fact, which is the DNC openly invited the Russians to play in our, in our political campaign by providing information, which is a lot of it just clearly trash and none of which has been verified. No, look, I mean, Carl, this is why we're in such a sad state right now where things are so politicized that people are putting politics ahead of country here. And this is one where you ought to care. I don't care. I don't care how much I hate Donald Trump. OK, anybody that is American should care. If the FBI yeah. is doing stuff like this, we need to know the answers. And I'm afraid about what we're going to find out. But we need to hear it. Carl Rowe, we need to hear it. thank you.